Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your October 1st to the 15th, 2021 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds, letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's let the bull sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Pisces. October 1st to the 15th, 2021, Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. Okay. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. All right. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left-hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. At our root, we have judgment and we have the moon. <laughs> I love that. So there can be a sense that we judge ourselves really harshly during this time, but we're also going to see ourselves coming out of a box, coming out of a stagnation. So that's going to be really powerful and really interesting. So the moon represents us, Pisces, in the major arcana. We're represented by the cups in the minor arcana. So we have the goddess of air, air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. If we're born on the cusp with Aquarius, or we have air sign energy within our natal chart that's coming through very powerfully in our inner self. We're going to have this need of communication, the whys and the how comes and the digging deeper into things. It's going to be really important for us. Then we have the goddess of earth. I love the two goddess energies here, earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. If we have earth sign energy within our natal chart, that's coming through very powerfully at our in our inner self at our base of self too not the rooted self but it's kind of like what we're looking at from here it all stems from words and it stems from our connection with the earth oh goodness we have a bunch here so we have the nine of swords overthinking over analyzing being way too much in our own heads the two of cups healing beautiful love the two of pentacles the repeat of the number two comes to the sense of of creativity but also connectivity is going to be really important. We're not fully balanced and our emotions can be a little bit all over the place. We have the Knight of Pentacles coming through again, Earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, here defending what it is that we love, what it is that we need as we move forward in our prosperity, but also defending what we're balancing because it's like we're trying to handle everything, but we're forgetting to balance ourselves. We're forgetting what we need, what we desire, what we want. We have the Four of Wands. 
in the public arena. This is celebration, happy occasions. This is the minor arcana wedding, wedding card. So there can be a commitment coming up or a marriage coming up, something where we're embracing our commitment to some aspect of our lives within the public arena. So this could be a job promotion. You know, this could be a wedding, right? This could be a sense of understanding ourselves better, falling more in alignment with who we are, being able just to celebrate ourselves, being able to say, wow, I'm worth it. And then we have the six of swords where we're taking everything that we've get, gathered, everything that we understand. We're really setting clear boundaries. We're understanding that emotionally, we're on a little bit rocky water at time. So it's going to be easy for us to doubt ourselves, but we're moving forward to where we need to be, where we want to be, what we're developing, what we're desiring within ourselves. Now, our energy to be mindful of during this time, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading and show me clearly is the lovers. So we have Gemini energy here. And it's going to be either be mindful of a Gemini, which could definitely be the case, but it's also going to be to be mindful of the indulgent aspects of ourselves. So it can be going after the lust of something instead of the, the love of something. It can be the sense of super self indulgence or not even super self indulgence, but self indulgence. Now, I personally believe in self care very, very strongly. I think that personally, especially for those of us who are empathic or those of us who have just a lot of responsibilities, that we, we take on or thrust upon us, we can tend to forget ourselves and tend to forget to take care of ourselves. That's important. This is overindulgence, which is always something that we have to be mindful of. Even if it's overindulgence in our sacrifices, in the martyrism, martyrism, martyrdom, there we go, that's the word, martyrdom of our existence. It's, we all know those people who tend to or seem to really take tremendous pride or just tremendous, you know, or just always talking about how deprived they are or how, you know, hard everything is. And you look at the choices that they're making and you're thinking, mm, it doesn't have to be that hard. So here it's being able to embrace that, embrace that energy and say, okay, I step back. I step back from the falling into indulgence of, of any time, whether it be, you know, the happy indulgence or whether it be the negative indulgence, that's going to be something we need to be mindful of. We're also going to be very mindful or need to be very mindful of the fact that we're just very drawn to people who seem to live life with an explanation point. And they might not have the the barriers that they need to just following one lust after another after another can sound like a really great idea, but it doesn't always work out the best. So do be mindful of that. Then we have our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels, love. We have to embrace what we love, not fall into overindulgence, right? So that's what we're being warned about, but embrace what we love. Embrace what we love and let our hearts move us forward. This is the heart chakra and this is saying, let love guide us. You know, so often we we look at what we think we're supposed to be, what we think we're supposed to love, how we think we're supposed to move forward. And we forget about our heart. We forget about our passion. We forget about what we truly want within this world and within ourselves. And so to open ourselves up to the heart chakra is going to be a very powerful, very beautiful thing for us. Now, we're going to be doing something different during this time. We're going to be talking about our astrology as well as the tarot. So on the 1st of October, Mercury is squared Pluto. Now, we ha what we have to remember here is that we tend to dive very deeply into things with Mercury squared Pluto, much deeper than we need to. We can fall down the rabbit hole very, very easily. Be mindful of this. And for some reason, the negative is going to be something that's very easy for us to focus on. It's very easy for a lot of signs during this time to focus on the negative, the more macabre aspect of life, watching a lot of true crime or watching any true crime, murder mysteries that aren't cozy murder mysteries. Those are going to be damaging to our psyches and horror. We're going to find that we can be very drawn to this stuff, very drawn to the bloody or the more explicit and then walk away from it with our energy vibration lessened and lessened and lessened. And, you know, it's just not good for us. It's just not good for us to take such imagery into our psyche Though we do it all the time. It's always on TV. It's always, you know, it's in, in movies, even in books, you know, the, the more gory, the better, but we have to be very mindful with ourselves, even on YouTube, you know, just falling down these, these holes, these rabbit holes can be intriguing. And then the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm gets, oh, you're clicking on this and then you're clicking on this video and then you're clicking on that video. Okay, we'll go deeper and deeper and deeper until we find ourselves clicking on things and we're like, whoa, I never needed to know that. 
I never needed to see that. And those are going to be things that, that stay in our psyche. So we have to be mindful of that during this time, especially. Now, on the 2nd of October, Venus is going to be sextile Pluto. We become very passionate about everything that we love. We want to share it with everyone. This is a day that we feel things very deeply, so we have to be kind to ourselves. But we're also going to get a little bit hurt when people aren't as passionately interested in what we are so passionately interested in. It doesn't mean that they don't love us. It doesn't mean that they aren't, you know, interested in what we're saying. They just don't have the same enthusiasm. Actually, everybody has their own enthusiasm. And it's like a little child patiently waiting for their turn, doing a terrible job of it, but trying really, really hard. So we just have to be mindful of this with ourselves and with others. On the 3rd of October, Mercury is going to be trying Jupiter. This brings a wider point of view and a really fun outlook of our lives and where we want to be and where we're headed and what we desire. There's great energy here for planning for our future, but it also really helps us to have things run smoothly, to have us align with what we desire and where we want to be and, and who we are. There's really fun energy here to explore and to gain a greater understanding of. Now on the 6th of October, we have the new moon in Libra, which there will be a separate video done on this new moon, which is fantastic for new beginnings, but we also have Pluto going direct. Now, if we're sensitive, at all, which most most Pisces are because of the sensitivity that the moon brings us. We tend to be more sensitive to the planetary alignments than other signs. Now, some of us may not be, but I've seen that more and more with Pisces than I haven't. So with Pluto going direct, we can feel this very intensely for days, if not weeks afterwards. But it's a good intensity. But what we find that we're letting go of when Pluto is coming out of retrograde, we're letting go of the fear of letting go. We're letting go of the need for control, which can be something that has become kind of a part of us, a way that we define ourselves during this time. It's like, okay, everything just has to be just so. Now there's a power of the goddess within us. There's a power of, of power to us and creation and beauty and intensity and, and being. And yes, we have that. But we've also put a lot upon our shoulders. We can kind of feel our hair turn gray or white or, you know, however it progresses. We can feel the stress upon us. And now it's saying, you know what? No, no. As we come into Pluto going direct, you know, we feel this strong sense of ambition and focus and this sense of empowerment because I don't need to be wasting all this energy worried and confused and upset and overwhelmed. I can spend this energy on me and finding my adventure and embracing my adventure and embracing change, embracing what I desire and want and love within my life. Now, the 7th of October, Venus moves into Sagittarius energy. This brings us a live and let live attitude, but it also brings us a don't you dare tell me what to do attitude. You know, we don't, we don't want people to come in and tell us how to live our lives or even just make gentle suggestions. It's like, no, this is my life. I'm going to do with it as I choose. This is a day, and I don't know what day of the week it is, but this is a day where on the 7th of October, if we can take the day off, if we can take the day just for ourselves, do so. Absolutely, positively do so, because it will make your life so much better. If you can't take the day off, if you have responsibilities and people that need you, which is completely understandable in most of us, take an hour to yourself, a half hour to yourself if you can. Just take time to be with you. On the 8th of October, the sun is going to be conjunct Mars. And this brings us a hero's energy. And it makes us just think that we can accomplish anything. But it also brings a bit of a temper. So do be mindful of that. But this is a really great day to start something new, to go after what we desire, to open up the doors. On the 9th of October, Venus meets with the moon in Scorpio. This opens the third eye chakra like no other. It brings us intense insights and awareness, and this is known as the gate of creativity. If there is something we're wanting to create, if there's something new we're wanting to embrace, this is the time to go after it. When Mercury conjunct Mars, we become, which is also on the 9th of October, we become quick-minded, quick-witted, you know, quick of reflex. This is a great time to start practicing yoga. If you already practice yoga, this is a great day to practice yoga or just to embrace the flexibility of our bodies, of our minds, to kind of push ourselves out of our comfort zone. Now, we're going to be a little bit sharp-tongued during this time. Do be mindful of that. We're also going to be very direct and not want to sugarcoat anything. So that coupled with the fact that the third eye is opening, that coupled with the fact of the great gate of creativity, it's an interesting combination to say the least. So we can really be aware of our own sensitivity, our own, you know, need for creativity and, you know, kindness and, and 
alignment with our dreams and our goals. But we're also going to think that the rest of the world needs to just hear it as it is. And unfortunately, because again, this is astrology and true for everybody, we're going to find that people tend to handle us that same exact way, where they're going to be super sensitive and yet they're going to be very direct and very blunt when it comes to them. So do be mindful of this or very direct and blunt when they think of what we should be doing, of them giving us advice, you know, so to say, because it might not actually be very good advice, but do be mindful of this during this time. Now on the 10th of October, Saturn becomes direct. We become more focused on our responsibilities and getting the job done. We're much more down to earth and we really become aware of our limitations, which we might think is a bad thing, but it's actually a really good thing. We start to say, you know, this I'm really good at, this I'm not. You know, this is where I excel, this is where I don't. This is just honesty and me being open with myself. And now I can move forward, embracing my successes and embracing my achievements and how I excel and not lamenting over where I don't. We can also become really focused on our long-term goals, not focused so much as things become clear. On the 13th of October, Venus is going to be sextile Saturn. This is a time for being around family and friends and really embracing what we love. Now we can be very self-sacrificing for our long-term, for the long-term good of our relationships. This doesn't just have to be our personal relationships. This can also be our work relationships, you know, or our work, like what we're sacrificing for what we love. The thing is, is that this isn't a time to step on every stone and to, to get drained because it can be really easy for us to know that we have sacrificed for the greater good, right? And for it not to be recognized is going to be very harmful, very hurtful for us. So there needs to be this mutual respect. If there isn't this mutual respect, we, we need to not be dragged down the rabbit hole of resentment. So do be mindful of that. On the 15th of October, this is the best day to, to end, you know, this reading, which it goes from, of course, the first, first to the 15th. This is a time when the sun is going to be trying Jupiter. This makes us lucky and generous and happy, and it makes us larger than life. There's a sense of just brilliance around everyone. We can really bring intense spiritual awareness and awakening to our lives during this time, really move forward in a direction that we hadn't thought we'd be moving forward in. We'd love to share knowledge and ideas. We can also be a little bit too generous and too indulgent. So do be mindful of that, that we can kind of take things to the extreme during this time. Now at our root, we have judgment. Judgment is the sense of coming out of our box. In the Rider-Waite Smith deck, it is, you know, the angel blowing their trumpet and people rising out of their coffins. Now here, I just am trying to see if there's a knight. No, this is just, this is just rocks. We have here, this kind of like demon like creature and the sense of being judged now we always have a fear as human beings as being judged wrongly as being found wanton and so this is a time where we're looking at the way that we're judging ourselves and we can really find that we're being too harsh but we're also going to find that we need to step out of the box step out of the negativity step out of the expectations of others step out of the the darkness that we've put ourselves in and a lot of times you know we tend to fall down that that rabbit hole there's just the sense of the rabbit hole being a really good analogy this time for us pisces because we're super curious we want an adventure we want something new but we also want to be mindful of the chaos that can come and so here we're looking at the intensity of being the intensity of what we desire and we're finding that we're rising out of darkness and we're rising more and more to ourselves to who we are, to who we want to be, to inspiration, to ideas, ideas and ideologies that align with us. This might be going out of the norm, most definitely, but this is a sense of us embracing who we are, where we want to be, what we love, and more importantly, coming into alignment with the very essence of our being, the very power of ourselves. And as we do this, we start to see the webs that have been, been spun of communication of language of ideas of hopes and dreams and wishes we can have a tendency to say things like oh it doesn't work for me this works for everybody else but it doesn't work for me and we're going to need to really be mindful of the language that we're using during this time because we need to set ourselves we need to start casting new thread we need to start new weaving a new pattern where it isn't that everything is harder for us is that we don't fully understand the struggles of others 
because we're so good as human beings of putting on this mask and saying, oh, this worked for me, or oh, this is so fantastic. But we can also judge success and sadness differently. You know, for one person, sadness can be another person's good day. You know, a person can say, oh, I'm really sad. And a person who may be suffering from depression or, you know, having a really hard time in life might be like, well, that's, that's a fantastic day. Like, how could you be sad about this? We have to be very mindful of what we're comparing ourselves to and how we're comparing ourselves to these people. We also have to be mindful of the words that we're saying and what we are creating, the world that we are creating around us, because our worlds are only based off of our words and our perceptions. And that's going to be a really powerful thing that we come to the conclusion of during this time. It's like, I get to craft the world around me. I get to weave the web. Now, yes, there are some things in life that are out of our control. We could be working in a place that we don't really like. We could be undervalued, you know, underappreciated. And those are going to be things that we need to, to address most definitely and see how to elevate ourselves because we're embracing this land of milk and honey this land of prosperity and sweetness and beauty and success and power and insight and understanding. We're embracing this tenacity of being and this connection with our earth as we have this connection with our voice. We become the creators of richness. We become the creators of power. And as we do so, our head will get in the way. Now, I don't know why there is this darkness or moroseness around us, Pisces. But what we have here is the sense of doubt and fear and chaos and hurt and pain and nightmares. And all I'm going to get if I follow my dreams, all I'm going to get if I start to rise up is, is doubt, is fear, is being hit back down, is not getting to the place that I want to be. And this is going to be a time where we start to look at that very differently. We start to look at the fears and the nightmares that hold us back because the world, well, they're not seeing it. The outside world is not seeing the inside struggle. And yet our inner self is saying, you can have the world. Like you are the goddess here. Embrace this goddess energy. Embrace the sacred feminine energy. It doesn't matter how you identify yourself or what pronoun you use. What matters is that there's this creative, brilliant essence to you that is saying, you know, utilize me. Utilize me and work with me and open up these doors and see that the world is so much more than we thought it was And yet we have the same old doubts and fears coming in that says oh, no, this isn't for me This is for somebody else. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly and yet There's a unity and a healing that comes into play the balancing of the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine The balancing of our dreams and our wishes the coming together with healing with love with insight with ideas And it brings us to this place where we start to see that emotionally things are out of balance. Now it can be around money or our idea of, of prosperity, but it's also going to be emotional. A lot of this is going to be emotional and we're going to need to find that we need to plant our feet firmly on the ground and understand what we want, understand what we're balancing for, you know, understand not what we're balancing for, what we're gaining our balance over. Saying, you know, this is where I need to be. This is what I desire in my life. This is how I'm opening up my door by firmly planting my feet on the ground, firmly embracing who I am and what I want and what I desire being and where I desire going. And then I can balance things because there's always going to be a little bit of trickery in our lives. There's always going to be things that aren't said or, you know, that people will say, oh, well, that's implied. And it's kind of almost like politicians speak, you know, when they can say everything and yet nothing at the same exact time. That's what we're going to feel like in life. It's like, can't things just be made clear? And what we have to understand is that by coming into unity and harmony and balance within ourselves, things become clearer. Things become more open and real. Becoming, you know, upfront with what we're scared of and what we're overwhelmed by, by speaking to a professional or speaking to people who love and care for us. Though sometimes that can be frustrating because they could be like, well, just snap out of it. You know, things aren't as bad. Get out of your own head. But sometimes when we're down that spiral, when we're stuck in our own heads and in our own chaos, it can be really, really hard. And so here we're going to have to come to the conclusion that we are slowly and steadily moving forward, that prosperity is a part of our identity and of ourselves. That we're not moving as quickly as we'd want to? No, we're not. But that there is a power and a richness and a beauty and an intensity to us that needs to be seen, that needs to be acknowledged. We need to start seeing this within us. And if we just can't see this, we're going to need to reach out for somebody to be able to guide us, to be able to help us, to be able to embrace this healing power. Now it moves us to the Four of Wands. A Four of Wands is happy occasions, celebration, love, happiness, success, bounty, beauty, new job opportunities, moving house, you know, an adventure is coming. We just have to make it. 
we have to make that adventure and guide us forward. We have to embrace what we love and what we need and who we are and what we're desiring from our lives. And as we do this, we embrace ourselves more and more and more. We see ourselves more openly, more honestly, and more powerfully than we ever had. We start to celebrate the little things because the little things add up to the bigger things. We start to celebrate what we desire in life. We start to celebrate who we are and we start to celebrate our way forward. This is saying to us, celebrate. But this is also saying, look at things differently. Don't look at things as having to be one way or another. Remember the world isn't black or white, white page, black print, you know, everything spelt out so clearly and crisply to be remembered for time in memoriam and also so that we have these rules to go by. Everything is gray. You know, everything is about, creation is about the shading, okay? To make something come alive, to make it, you know, pop out on a page, to make it feel more real. It's about the shading. It's about the gray areas. And we're going to start to embrace that within our lives, within ourselves. And it leads us to the Six of Swords. It leads us to taking what we need, piling up and gathering what we desire and moving forward. Here it says boundaries. We need clear boundaries. What we can do and what we can do, how we want to move forward and how we don't want to move forward, our intentions and our passions and our desires. But we also need to follow our emotions, follow our spiritual self. We need to know that the road will not always be smooth. It will be a little choppy at times. But we have to embrace, you know, the journey to come. And that's really important because it's going to be really interesting that where we think we're ending up is not going to be actually what transpires during this time. There's going to be something beautiful. There's going to be something more in alignment with our souls and ourselves that come forward. And we're going to start to celebrate it. We're going to need to celebrate it to move past darkness and to align ourselves with the goddess within. Now, our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the king of wands. The King of Wands is fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And this is just falling into a sense of of temper, a sense of fire is always going to be right. The more passionate I can be, the more fiery I can be, the more intense I can be, the more people will take me seriously. That might be the case and that might work for a lot of people. But Pisces, a temper never looks good on you. Just period, end of discussion. It just doesn't look good on us. What we have to do here is we have to embrace our passion for life and our passion for our existence, but do so in a loving, caring, harmonious way, embracing our heart chakra. And as we do this, we will start to see ourselves falling more in alignment with where we want to be. Now, it's not saying that a little fire here and there is a bad thing. You know, being a passionate person myself, it's, it's very important. But what we have to know is when that passion is taking over, but also when it is causing us to have too much of a temper and causing us to be a little bit too short fused. We're also going to be very drawn to people who are very assertive, who are very passionate, who are very driven, who seem to have it all because they've gone out and taken it. And yes, I mean, we can embrace this warrior spirit if we want to, this kind of like conqueror Alexander the Great spirit. But what we also have to embrace is the right path for us and how we express our passion, how we express what we desire. It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy which is holistic health, the root chakra. This is one of my absolute favorite cards. Now, when we have the root chakra coming into play and when we have holistic health coming into play, it's saying embrace the root of you, embrace the passion of you, embrace what you desire, embrace what you need, embrace what you want. So when we have holistic self coming forward, it says, who are you holistically? And then how do we take care of ourselves to connect ourselves to the earth? to connect ourselves to what we desire in life, to our joys, to our happinesses, to our successes, and to our beauties? How do we embrace our holistic being? And this is saying things like, make sure you eat properly, make sure you're not drinking too much, make sure, you know, alcohol, make sure that you're getting proper sleep, and make sure that you are in alignment with who you are. If you feel out of alignment, start to look at why, start to look at the kink in the cog that is, is keeping you from running smoothly in your inner self. It moves us then to our subconscious rooted energy, which is the fool. We're starting on an adventure and every single hero's journey, every single person who becomes the hero of their story is first the fool because we're not going to follow the conventions. We're not going to walk the proper path. You know, this isn't doctor, lawyer, you know, CEO kind of path forward, though it can wind up being that way, but it's going to always be just a little bit different. 
just a little bit off the beaten path. I had people look at us and say, are you sure about that? You know, do you really think you could do that? Do you really think that'll make you money? Do you really think that'll be fulfilling? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. And I get to be the hero of my story. And as foolish as you might think it is, is as powerful as it is for me and for others. And that's going to be the real important thing here, Pisces. It moves us to our subconscious inner self. And that's the five of earth, which I always see here as a bit complexing. Well, it's actually the circle of life and being. We have the the bones, we have the the rabbit, we have the bunnies inside. We have the sickle, yes, that that cuts down the food and the nourishment. And so what we have here with the five of of earth, the five of cups, not the five of cups, the five of pentacles. The five of pentacles is the poverty mentality. The five of pentacles is being on the outside of wealth. But the five of pentacles is also the cycle of being. The cycle of being able to realize our wealth and our worth and our prosperity and our bounty and being able to nurture that within us and understanding that a part of us has to die away in order for the success to come forward because that part of I can't, you know, doesn't get to rule the I can'ts anymore. It brings us to our subconscious emotional self. And that's the two of swords. We have a choice to make. Actually, it's not a choice to make. It is understanding that a road is opening up that we never realized before. Oh, that is so funny. It's, it's understanding that we're looking at things as black or white. You know, white page, black print, everything being spelled out a very certain way. And yet a new road, a new pathway is opening up. A new passion, a new power, a new greatness. And this isn't being held back the way that we thought we were. This is... This is something more coming forward. And as we embrace this, our subconscious public arena self is the four of pentacles. It says here stability, but it's embracing stability through the releasing of vampiric energy, always with the four of pentacles. I see this as vampiric energy where we have to guard our chakras, where we have to, you know, hold on to what we have because we're afraid that we won't have it anymore. And it's not being foolish with our money. It's being mindful and practical and prosperous. But it's also grounding ourselves in our success, in our bounty, in what we want and what we need, and understanding where people are stealing this energy from us, where we feel overwhelmed, where we feel denied, where we feel, you know, pain. This vampiric energy that says we can't starts coming in, starts draining us. And now we're going to start to see ourselves quite differently because we're becoming aware of it. And as we become aware of it, it's like, why does this energy get to drain me? Why does this get to have control over my life? I get to step into the light and the beauty of me. All right. All right, Pisces. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the goddess within it. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Pisces.